Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Today we are doing leather conditioning. Yeah, so today we're going to do some leather conditioning. And I prepared with a little bit of trusty conditioner. I prepared with a little trusty shampoo. So they brought the shampoo and conditioner. The problem is it's not that kind of shampoo and Aww. conditioning. <laughs> yep, that's right. So we are doing leather conditioning, not to be confused with the shampooing and conditioning of our hair that we yeah. do in the shower at night. Um, but leather conditioning, as you see, I have a, a number of leather products here, none of which have been conditioned before. This is our first time doing this. Um, if you're an outdoorsman or a bushcrafter or a survivalist or whatever, if you're into the outdoors, chances are you own some kind of leather products. Chances are it's a leather sheath and um, you want to condition those leather products. Uh, the reason for that is because the conditioning protects uh, the leather, it waterproofs it, it can even restore it if you have old like a dried cracked leather, the, uh, the conditioner can, can restore it to new life. Um, this one I've had for uh, many years now. I got this in 1994 when I was in the Marine Corps. Other than that, these are all brand new. I've got these in the last six months or so, and I want to go ahead and do the, the leather conditioning so I can protect them from when I'm out in the elements. This one is actually uh, my son's uh, knife. He got a, a new, his first pocket knife. Show him your pocket knife. Got that for Christmas. Um, what kind of knife is it? It's a buck show cook, and it has my name engraved with it. Yeah, so we all got Buck Selkirks. I have the large fixed blade, my daughter got the, the small fixed blade, and my son has the small folding Selkirk. It did not come with the sheath, but I got him the sheath so that he can have that option of carrying it on his belt if he wanted to, or he could carry it as a you know regular pocket knife in his pocket. Go ahead and put it away, son. Um, anyway, so uh, we're going to get to the conditioning. And so uh, what I know from watching YouTube videos, they all pretty much say the same thing. They all talk about how... Leather is basically an animal skin, and because it's animal skin, it's porous, and because it's porous, you want to heat up the, uh, the leather before applying the leather conditioner. And the reason for that is because uh, it'll open up the pores, and that makes it uh, so that it will um, absorb the, the conditioner better. Um, and so the way that you do that, the way most people do it, is they get like a hair dryer. So I went to Walmart, and I got this one. I wanted to get the cheapest one they had, which was $9. Unfortunately, they were all sold out of this one, so I got this one, which was the second cheapest, at $12. All right, so, so uh, I don't have much hair, so I have no use for a hair dryer other than using it to uh, warm up my leather products. And my sister's hair. Uh, yeah, my daughter might use it when she gets out of the shower. She says she wants to use it, but uh, primarily it's for the leather conditioning. Um, I have seen videos where people have talked about how you can actually put this on the, put your leather product on like the dash of your car to warm it up. Uh, just let it sit out there for 10-15 minutes. You don't want to leave it out there too long because it could actually damage it, but you can warm it up that way. Uh, one guy actually sat it next to the campfire while he was out um, you know, camping. Um, again, he's, he said you don't want to put it too close to the fire because you could actually you know, damage it. But So there's other ways to warm it up, um, you know, but we're doing the hair drying method. So um, uh, Also, they say that you want to use an all-natural conditioner. The one that I got here, this is made by Salty Fish. Um, I got it on Amazon. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but uh, as you can see, it's, it protects, waterproofs, and restores leather. Um, and they say you want an all-natural leather conditioner, and the reason for that is because some of the ones that are made with like man-made chemicals, those chemicals seem to do a good job at first, but uh, after a while, those chemicals can actually dry out and damage the leather. So you want an all-natural one. So I went with this one, the Salty Fish brand, and. Um, they say what you do is you just warm it up with the, the hair dryer and then taking a, a clean rag, you then apply the, the, the conditioner, whatever one you're using, to the actual product and then you wipe off the excess and then uh, one guy says you hit it again with the hair dryer to warm it up one more time so that it kind of reopens those pores so it'll really absorb that, uh, the conditioner. Um, and then I guess you let it dry for uh, overnight at least, I guess. I don't know. What do you think? Overnight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to give it a shot. How does it smell? I don't really smell much of anything. You guys? Here, Josh. Smell nothing? All right, so I'll do the first one, and then Lele, uh, you want to do this one? Yeah. Of course, Joshy wants to do his. So here we go. They say you want it just warm to the touch, so I'll... 
we'll see. Oh, the folding knife? Yeah. Sure. Sure, buddy. All right, so the, uh, it seems like it's warm to the touch, so we're just going to rub that in, the outside part of this right here. I'm going to work it in really, really good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do kind of like one section at a time. I did that front section, now I'm going to do this part here. And a tip about pocket knives. A tip about pocket knives, okay. just folding knives in general. Don't baton with them. That's right. You know, we, we learned how to do some batoning the other day, and uh, Joshie wanted to baton with his uh, folding pocket knife, and I said that probably wasn't a good idea. Um, it's not really meant for that. You want to use a full tang knife for that. Thanks for the tip, buddy. All right, so I've got the, the leather conditioner worked all, all the way in this sheath. Um, you know, in one of the videos that I, I watched, I said you want to go inside as far as you can because you want to get all the, you want to, you know, you want to condition every part of it that you can get to. And then uh, one of the videos that I said after, or one of the videos that I watched, they said that after you, you get it with, uh, you, you fully condition it, you want to heat it up again, I guess, just so it can really absorb the, uh, the conditioner. So we're going we're gonna to warm it up one more time. just kind of wipe off the excess and that is essentially how you condition leather so uh, we're gonna put this one off to the side it's my old Marine Corps K bar um, and then who's up next me all right so daughter wants to give it a go with the uh, Damascus steel knife all right <laughs> Get in really good. Okay, he holds it up to us off the table. And just kind of work it in. Just work it. There you go. Really work it into the leather. It actually does smell kind of nice. I guess you have to open it up first. So I think. I think this is made out of, it doesn't say on the actual container, but I think it's mink oil. At least that's one of the main ingredients. As I was researching this, a lot of the leather conditioners are made of mink oil. So I think the other thing that the leather conditioning does is it softens the leather. Um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I, I played baseball and I had like a leather baseball mitt and it was really stiff. Um, and then my, my dad put some kind of oil on it and then, you know, kind of put the baseball in it and then kind of put it under the mattress for a while so it can kind of get softer. And, you know, the more I, the more I used it, um, and of course after the conditioning, it, it, it was, you know, easier to move. Whereas at first I could hardly, you know, squeeze the thing. Um, so I think that the conditioning will, uh, soften it. Plus it's my understanding that leather just kind of softens with use anyway. All right. So now it's Joshie's turn. Run in there and get a clean of these so we can wipe our hands. No, we'll use this one for the, I want to use the other one for wiping our hands. Everything is good? Yeah. Alright, there you go. Work it in there, butter. Do you want me to wipe it down? Okay. 
All right, guys, so it's it's just that easy. So easy that uh, a couple of kids can do it, right? Um, and again, uh, if you have leather products, you want to have it conditioned so you protect it. It'll, it'll last longer. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah. Anyway, guys, so that's that's it. That's leather conditioning. Not that hard. Our first time. Easy peasy. Um, I think you're supposed to like... Um, reapply the conditioner every so often. I don't know how often you're supposed to do it. I think probably no more than once or twice a year, so it's not something you have to do like super frequently. Um, you, you know, I would say maybe at least at minimum once a year uh, or as needed if you've exposed your leather products to a lot of the, uh, you know, to the, the elements of the, they've gotten wet, muddy, you've kept it on the dashboard in your car and it's you know, kind of getting all, you know, heat damage or whatever. Um, obviously, the more use, the more exposure you might want to reapply more often, but uh, at the bare minimum, maybe you know, once a year, twice a year. I don't know. I'd have to do some more research on that. But um, anyway, um, I've been wanting to do this for a while since I've got some new leather products, and now we've done it. So uh, there you have it, leather conditioning. Easy, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching.